What's up everyone? Welcome to part one of our pandas tutorial series and in this one we're going to do a quick introduction to what pandas is and we're going to look at the key data structure which is the data frame. So pandas is one of the core libraries in the data science stack for Anaconda. So it's built on NumPy and also matplotlib. It's very powerful and highly optimized and it's one of the best documented libraries. So if it sounds like something interested, this series is going to be a pretty comprehensive walkthrough on how to use it. So let's get started. To begin, let's talk about how to install pandas. And if you come to their install page on their docs, you'll see that the recommended way is to install with Anaconda. So if you're unfamiliar with Anaconda, I just made a video, which I'll link in the description which is a complete walkthrough of how to install Anaconda. So if you do that, it'll come with pandas and all the other scientific libraries like NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, etc. If you choose not to use Anaconda, it's just a little bit more tricky and there's instructions on the web page. But again, the simplest way is to just use Anaconda. Now, if we hop over to the docs, we'll see a quick description of what pandas is. So Pandas is a Python package providing fast, flexible, and expressive data structures designed to make working with relational or labeled data both easy and intuitive. So what that means is if we just come down here, Pandas is well suited for many different kinds of data. So the main one is tabular data. What I mean by that is think of an Excel spreadsheet, which they also mention here. And then any ordered or unordered time series data, matrix data, and some other things. But the main thing is tabular data. So think of CSV files and Excel sheets. So with that being said, let's jump over to a quick example where we can look at the key data structure, which is the data frame. This is the like heart of pandas. So to begin, let's jump over to a new notebook and get started with the quick demonstration of what the data frame is. So like always, we'll start with our import. So we'll import pandas as PD, and that's always convention to import it as PD. And then let's also get numpy as NP, like always. And we'll also do um, matplotlib.highplot as PLT. And then just to make our graphs look nicer, I'm just going to also run this um, config inline backend figure format and set it to SVG. This way we get SVG rendered graphics. So they look a little nicer. Cool. So we'll run that. And then what we need to do is just create some columns of data. So first thing I'm going to do is create an X variable and we'll use Lin space, and we'll go from zero to let's go four times mp.py, and we'll do 1000 points like always. And then I'm going to create a numpy array called volts, and it's going to be equal to mp.sign of x. And then let's just add a little bit of noise just for fun. So we'll do mp.random dot rand and it'll be the length of x. So this is just adding a little bit of noise to the sine wave and let's multiply it by 2.5. Cool. Then let's create another array. We'll call it current and that's going to be equal to mp.cosine of x and we'll do the same thing. Add a little bit of noise to it. So mp.random dot rand with length x. So if we were to plot this thing, one quick way to do this would be plt dot plot and then we'll do x and then volts and we'll just label label it as volts then plt dot plot x oops, current We'll label that as current. And then finally, plt.show. So when we run this, and then, yeah. Also, p 
plt.legend since I gave it labels. So here you can see we've got a nice little map plot lib plot with our volts, which is the blue plot, and then our current, which is this uh, orangey plot. And you can see we've added a little bit of noise to it. So this represents our data. And this would be the traditional way of working with it, just having these NumPy arrays and kind of keep track of it with three different three different objects or three different arrays. But a more simple and concise data structure is the data frame. So let's see how that works. So now let's come down to a new cell. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a dictionary. I'm gonna just call it signal dict. And then the data we'll put in here is the first column will be volts, which is just going to be volts. And then the next column will be current and that column will be current. Cool, so we have our dictionary and this is our starting point for creating the data frame. And the next thing we'll do is create the data frame object. So typically what you'll do is call it something DF. So in this case, I'll call it signal underscore DF for data frame. And the way to create one is to do PD dot capital D data and then capital F frame. And then we can just pass it the dictionary itself. So signal dict. And now if we were to take a look at this thing, we could just do signal df dot head. And you can see here that we get this table and it's showing us the first five rows of the data frame. We can also do tail and we get the last five rows of the data frame. And we can also just call the data frame itself. And it gives us the first few rows up to like 29. And then it gives us the last 30. So this is our data frame. You can see it's a little bit fancier, especially with Jupyter Notebooks. It's presenting it in a nice table with titles and bold font, a line, um, alternating background color. And then we also get this other column and what this column is, is called the index. So if you don't specify an index, it's going to add this index by default where it just starts from zero and then increments all the way up to the last element. So that's our data frame. And then some other cool things we can do with it is since pandas is integrated with matplotlib, we can simply call our data frame and then do plot and then plt.show. And you can see here, we get the exact same plot as we showed above. So here was the one we did manually where we specified everything in our legend. And here is the same thing, just calling plot on our data frame. There's a slight difference. You can see here, the X's goes exactly, or the X axis goes exactly from zero to 1000. Whereas here, there's a little bit of space on either side. But overall, it's basically the same thing. And the only difference is all we had to do was call plot. If we wanted to say, just get one signal from it, for example, I could just do volts and I just get the volts. And here, if I did current, I would just get the current. And if I wanted both, I could do, oops, let's do, volts and current. So I added a list of the signals I wanted and you can see I get both. So if you have multiple columns in your data frame and you only want to select certain ones, you can just provide a list of the signals you want and it'll plot them. So it makes it really simple and easy to plot your data. Another thing you can do is say you just want one um, column called out from your data frame. So I'll just, we'll just shorten it. So here you can see we're just getting the index and the values. So what this is, since we're calling one, this is what we would call a series. So in pandas, there's series and there's data frames and a data frame is just made up of a bunch of series. So each column you would consider it to be a series. So when we just specify one column from it, we're just returning that series. 
So I think that about does it for this video. Just a quick introduction to what the data frame is and how easily you can plot things with it. And in the next one, we'll expand on it. I think the next video we'll talk about how to read from files, how to create a data frame from a file, and then also how to save a data frame to a file. So stay tuned for the next one. If you like the video, give it a like. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button. Thanks. See ya.